Hello, so we move on to our next uh, topic, which is um, silicon nitride coating. So this is the next step in our solar cell manufacturing. Uh, once we create the end layer, after that, what we need is we need a passivation layer on top of your entire wafer. Also, what you need to do is you need to passivate if at all there are any defects. So this passivation layer is, um, is the silicon nitride layer. The passivation is done using silicon nitride and a thin layer of this material is coated on top of your wafer. Now, an additional advantage of uh, nitride layer is that it reduces the reflection from the wafer. So if you remember, we want to minimize the reflection because we want to capture as much sunlight as possible, as, as many photons as possible. So this silicon nitride actually creates a destructive interfer uh, interference pattern and therefore you uh, have the reduced reflection of light. So there are several advantages. How is this done? This is done by using a technique known as plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition. Now, since this is a manufacturing course, for us, this is more important and we'll be paying more attention to the, to the technique itself. Hmm. Okay, so before you learn about PECVD, you need to first know what is CVD, what is chemical vapor deposition. So as the name suggests, there is a chemical vapor hmm, and there is a certain deposition which is typically a film deposition. Film deposition. Hmm. So CVD techniques are always used for depositing thin films of a certain material. We have learnt about similar techniques when we were talking about the deposition of um, phosphorus, for example, uh, even doping in a way it is a thin film creation and it is happening uh, sometimes from the uh, from the vapors. We also learned during uh, the manufacturing of silicon itself can also be done um, atom by atom using a gaseous precursor. There are many other materials which can be deposited this way where we have chemical of a certain type, the vapors of this, and under cer certain conditions, let's say temperature and by changing the temperature and pressure, and sometimes also by creating an electric field between two electrodes, what we can do is we can activate a certain reaction. For example, in this uh, schematic, there is a material A. Hmm. The material A can split into B and C under certain conditions, let's say at a certain temperature. So what I do is I, I take a substrate, I take a heated substrate and I fill the fill the vapors in the chamber. Now on top of because this substrate is heated on top of this, the A gets decomposed into B and C and then Either the B and C themselves can deposit if that is the type of chemical the reaction stops there then we can also just get the films of B and C. Sometimes what we also want is this material C let's say again reacts with the environment again reacts with the chemical vapors that you have and gives you something called D. Hmm, another chemical called D and now you have the chemical the film of D deposited on, on top of your surface. surface. Basically, what you can do is you can control this precursor. Hmm. You can control the temperature on your substrate. You can also have thin catalytic films, as I, sh I have shown in this picture with, the, with thin yellow film. You can <coughs> also change the type of this catalyst and then um, accordingly, you can change the nature of the film or the chemical composition of the film. This is known as the chemical vapor deposition. This is, of course, done under high vacuum because also, you don't want any other additional reaction, whatever reaction you want, whatever chemical you have, you don't want anything else to be present. Typically, these chemicals, the vapors, are diluted in an inert gas, hmm, nitrogen or argon, not in oxygen because that, that will react. So, in an in inert gas, you can dilute your chemicals. Hmm. Okay, so this is a chemical vapor deposition. Another thing that you can do for depositing thin film is just a physical vapor deposition. So what is the difference here? I'm telling you that A converts into B plus C, B, C, D. If we just want the atoms of A, we take something known as a target. Let's say I want a metal film deposited. I want a copper film deposited on this substrate, whatever that substrate is. So I can make two electrodes out of these or connect them to uh, well-defined electrodes. 
and now somehow just i remove physically the atoms of atoms of uh, copper or whatever is the material whatever is my target i remove the atoms from there and deposit onto my substrate hmm? this is a physical process there is no chemical reaction taking place these atoms are generally removed by processes known as sputtering or evaporation hmm? evaporation simply means that some material is evaporated now if you don't want to increase the temperature you can reduce the pressure and that's how the atoms can come out of the of the target hmm? or you can um, you can also perform another technique very similar technique which is known as sputtering in our microfabrication lectures we'll go into the details of sputtering and evaporation so using these techniques you can physically remove the atoms and then deposit them onto your substrate so this is known as a physical vapor deposition now there is a third thing which is a combination of physical and chemical vapor deposition which is what is known as plasma enhanced since the name suggests plasma enhanced you know that there is some plasma in it hmm. how do we create a plasma using rf coils radio frequency coils hmm. so we create we give provide the electrical energy to something in order to create the plasma out of noble noble gases or we can also have other materials for example um in the previous lecture we learned that uh, there can be um carbon tetrafluoride plasma or there is oxygen plasma so we create a plasma hmm. and this plasma now provides the activation energy for the chemical reactions that are taking place so we still have the chemicals we, we still have the precursors which we need to deposit but now the activation energy is being provided by the plasma so it is enhanced the activation the the reaction is enhanced the growth rate is also enhanced by the plasma so this is in principle a combination of pvd and cvd hmm okay so what happens in general the free radicals are formed they are formed faster and then they are deposited onto the surface where they are poly polymerized so polymerization by by polymerization we, we mean here that the radicals combine with each other or they form the bond on top of the surface on your substrate hmm advantages of why do we want to do plasma enhanced cvd because it can be done at lower temperature just imagine if we were doing the same process using simple cvd which is there in the diagram then we need to have a heated substrate that's why in fact i made the cvd diagram we need to have a heated substrate we may also require a catalytic material hmm? because there is some activation energy that is required for that material to crack for the vapors to crack and to you know undergo a certain reaction whatever we want hmm? so here in the case of plasma enhanced cvd that activation energy is being provided by the plasma so now we don't need to go for higher temperatures that is advantage number 1 number 2 you also have more uniformity in the films and you have higher relatively higher growth rates so sometimes when you have your entire device for example you also have other um, other parts of your um, electronic circuitry for example you have some metal contact pads or something in that case you want to avoid going to higher temperatures because you don't want to melt something which was which will later on create a short circuit so in that case um so especially in the case of photovoltaics you need you typically would use plasma enhanced cvd okay now specifically for silicon nitride the pe cvd that is uh, that is carried out is generally using silane gas the formula for silane is sih4 and uh, nitrides you can generally write sixny but the most common silicon uh, nitride is si3n4 so that's what i have mentioned here now um this is the reaction written in blue color that you will have nitrogen gas and you will have silane and um under the conditions of the pv uh, pe cvd you they will uh, they will form silicon nitride and there will be some hydrogen removed or released okay now this nitrogen can also be replaced by ammonia because what you need is you actually need some source of nitrogen right you need silicon and nitri nitrogen so that they can make silicon nitride so nitrogen source can also be changed um uh, uh, so you can use nitrogen you can also use ammonia which has its advantages you have uh, better composition better uniformity and growth rates 
but um, in you can see that in this P PCVD process there is also some hydrogen being released so there is also some hydrogen deposited along with the nitride but since you are creating passivation layer anyway it is generally within the acceptable range okay so all in all, what, is, what are the parameters that you will optimize when you're performing PECVD? Of course, you will optimize the temperature. You will optimize the pressure of the gases because you see there is uh, there are a lot of these uh, inert gases and the uh, not just inert ga gases, but also your precursor gases, your feed gases. Feed gas means this is the gas which will provide this is like this acts as a feed material for your whatever you are going to deposit so all of these gases their flow rates need to be optimized now since we are creating uh, the plasma what is what should be how much plasma should be there how much intensity should be there because remember that plasma too much plasma will also damage your wafer with any plasma related technique you can always uh, assume that there may be some physical damage the moment you go even you know your plasma is little bit too much so you need to optimize the radio frequency in order to to uh, to maintain the the plasma that you require and of course you will also um, because you have so many gases so you need to optimize the flow rates of all these gases so at the end what you get is a thin silicon nitride film on top of your wafer